so i hope uh, yesterday all of you uh, have created the library manager app okay uh, all of you are on this uh, library management project and if i do list i'll see uh, library manager i'll see uh, manage.py so these are uh, <clears throat> sorry already created by your yesterday yes okay yes all right so now we'll be proceeding ahead uh, in this so we'll go to library manager in library manager as we saw we have all these files separate files so the models which will uh, which will be okay uh, your you can say it's your database okay information will all be in this models.py all right and views will be your logic currently we don't have any templates uh, html templates we'll see that okay we'll make that also so yeah so the things are separate uh, now let's go let's see what is in the views so we'll do notepad.exe this notepad.exe will work only for windows user if uh, you are in uh, linux uh, or ubuntu uh, you you can use vim or you can use any any text editor okay uh, uh, spider will also do i'm just using this notepad.exe it is quite easy to manipulate over here uh not to jump here and there so yeah notepad.exe space views.py uh will open that file for you just a note so anyone who doesn't want to use notepad they can open spider like yesterday and you will see the file browser on the top right so you can use spider ide as well and you can see all the files uh, on the top right and you can navigate views.py and all those files on the top right also so this is just one way of doing it using notepad and uh, uh, all of us tend to use different uh, text can, editors. Sir, can you mention once again the process like we have to go to the how we have done that open the notepad just open spider ide and go to the folder that we created yesterday and you'll find all the files inside so Prathamesh has opened views.py. If you remember, yesterday we had opened views.py by double clicking on the file name on the top right in the spider IDE. Right? Spider was the text editor that we had opened. So, for anyone who, for whom the commands are not working, please do not get confused. Prathamesh is using Notepad because he is most comfortable with just opening the Notepad from the command line. You don't have to constantly uh, emulate or create the same command and run it. You can use spider IDE. Prathamesh is just opening the file using the notepad command. You can use spider uh, editor and open the file directly using your mouse. So uh, you don't have to sort of be stressed out about why this command is not working, why notepad is not working, etc. Please just open spider IDE or the spider editor. On top right, you will find the files tab. Click on the files tab. Go to desktop. Go to Django project. Go to library management. Go inside, and you will find all the files in one place. Please open it from there, right? So, from here on, Prathamesh may tell you to, you know, open some file, and he will open it using Notepad.exe. You can just open it by using double click on your Spider editor interface, right? So, please do not get confused. Uh, this is just one way of opening the file. That's it. Thanks. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is just uh, we are just uh, opening a file and we are going to edit it. So it can be done in any text editor in any way. Uh, okay, which is comfortable as Ankit said. Uh, so yeah. So once you have opened uh, views.py, you should see something like this. Create your views here. They have already imported from Django dot shortcuts import render, uh, which helps you render your uh, content. Uh, yeah, and uh, provide a response HTTP. Basically, your HTML web page. 
so all of you uh, are on the same page uh, they have opened their views because now we are going to type the code we are going to create first view function okay so we'll be creating a first view uh, function that is everyone uh, are aware of, about writing a function so we'll uh, create a function and we'll obviously follow uh, yesterday uh, what ankit mentioned is this uh, library manager and we have uh, views.py over here so i'll be creating uh, with same name so to be in sync so we'll create a view books and yeah request or object basically contains all the detail about the request that comes to the server from the client all the information sometimes we also have a uh, post and get all the details so that is quite important for the views and now uh, we were going to return a response we want to return a response http response so for now uh, before using this shortcut we'll do it in a quite uh, uh, trivial way in django that is we'll import from django dot http import http response okay so this is uh, another class provided by django uh, to give your response return your response and this is what we are going to use and in return we'll just return http response and uh, this can be your any you can pass any uh, html content so like i'll just say books okay for now book number 1 math book number 2 okay uh, maybe something on python and uh, yeah anything okay you can simply write books uh, this is just a demonstration of how uh, we okay handle the request in a quite trivial way and we are just returning some response all right uh, so yeah you you all can uh, write up to this point do import the http response class which you will be using to give response and yeah inside response uh, you can type anything you want this is my first view this is something that it's just a string uh, which will be sent okay to the client yeah once you have done don't forget to save the file okay control s will help and whatever save uh, okay so important thing is to save the file any specific name is required to save this file so that uh, in i mean later no, no 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 it, uh, the views uh, itself is the name of the file okay uh, yeah uh, so we'll will now next we'll see how uh, we when whenever django gets a re uh, request uh, how this uh, particular function is called so we are going to this file has to be saved in the django project only yeah yeah all will be uh, in your container that is uh, your library manager okay so it's already present over there we are just modifying this file the web framework has already given us the structure okay. so it has done half of uh, maybe 40% of the work for us we are just uh, simply writing what is the most important thing for a website yeah so it does import for us it tells us that you should create your views here it has already created the file at the proper location uh, and also all done by the framework i hope uh, most of you all have completed sir in spider i cannot open the files yeah i am so okay so uh, so this is your uh, uh, spider editor just give me a minute it takes it's a little slow sometimes takes time but this is your spider editor there is a files tab on the top right if you can see where i'm pointing uh, if you click on that you should find a file sort of a, a, a file browser kind of a place 
I'm just closing this. Uh, your editor will look like this. It will be an empty temp file. You will then have maybe something like this on the top right. And if you click on Files tab, then it will open the uh, it will open the Files uh, like Explorer. So I've clicked on the Files tab now, and I can see that the it shows me a list of files. Your file should be located in Desktop Django Project Library Management. If you go inside, uh, you probably have to double click on every option to open them. And once you open them, you should be able to see all the files in one place. So, for example, Library Manager contains the views.py file which we just edited right now. So, open Library Manager. You just click on the arrow on the left near Library Manager and it will show a drop down. It will give you view. Use dot dot py and it should open up on the left. It could take some time. Uh, Spider is not known for its speed, but uh, it will open up. So if I double click on use dot py, it will open up on the left with a new tab. Here you can basically just edit and say Control S, or you can click on the floppy icon here and save the file. Right. Uh, so. Given this information, are you still facing any issue? It is simply showing the text, so not the uh, uh, few are considering as an active uh, different colors. Or is oh, it I different for different you. editors? Uh, so what sort of so let's I have see. Python 3.9. It should look something like this. Is it looking something like this? No, content is same, but it is not looking like this. I don't get you. Did the file open on the left? Yeah, it's open. Yeah. Right. That's it. So the colors may may differ from version to version or something like that. That's what that's okay. It's a plain white. Yeah. Yeah. So I may have a dark uh, theme or something or the version may be different or whatever, but uh, the color doesn't matter. What matters is, is the file open? Can you save it? Can you edit it? That is more yeah, yeah, yeah. important here, I guess. Uh, so, Jayant, can you please confirm if, if you are able to do this? If not, we can still wait. Yes, but... sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Abhishek has asked, can you show how it is done in Notepad? In Notepad, you type what you want to type, and then you click Save. Right? Uh, Prathamesh already did it. Uh, I don't know why you would want to use Notepad if you already have spider, like I showed you, you already have all the files on your left and you have the editor on your right. Please use spider if you have it available. It is easier to move between different different files. Uh, people who are not comfortable with the command line will find it difficult to constantly move to the command line, open a new file, then again go to notepad, etc. And it becomes also confusing because Prathamesh or for example, some other person who is more friendlier with the command line can move from one folder to another very easily. Uh, for newbies or people who are new to the command line, it is difficult to change folders, open the correct file, etc. This will cause a lot more confusion later on. Please use the easy way out. Uh, there's nothing wrong in using the easy way of moving between files like the spider. Spider editor gives you an easy way to do it. Nothing wrong in doing that. Prathame just prefers the notepad, so he's using that because he's already familiar with the command line. In case you're not, or in case the command line is something that is new to you, I'd recommend that you stick with the spider editor and do not try for any new adventure. Yeah. As long as you can edit the file and as long as you can save it properly, that is what is important. So we want you to save, edit the correct file here. Right, because then your application will work correctly. Thanks. Uh, All right. So I think uh, everyone uh, like are done with this uh, part of the code. So fine. Uh, yeah. Once we are done with this file, we have saved this file. Uh, we'll be moving back now. Uh, the thing is, yeah, we have. Uh, made a view but now uh, we can create multiple views okay like we can right now we have books later we may have add book okay uh, some other okay operations that we want to do so it will be a separate view 
so uh, whenever request uh, comes from client side how does django know that okay i have to use this view i have to call this particular business logic so that is what uh, okay is done in our urls uh, file in which uh, in, that is the place where we okay tie up uh, the request uh, with the view so we'll be moving now to the library management that is your okay uh, the project uh, library management inside library management you have another folder the container uh, library management which contains all your project settings file so we'll be moving there and you should see uh, these file settings urls wizgi wizgi uh, uh, all these files are uh, this file is mainly okay for if you are deploying something so will not be touching it at all now so i hope uh, all of you can see uh, urls dot my file already present in your library management container which lies within library management there is one more folder library management and that you have urls dot py so everyone uh, can see urls dot py will be opening this urls dot py file that is our next uh, file that we need to add it so as ankit mentioned uh, the spider editor will be easy for all to just move around the folder and edit the file i'll still be continuing with notepad dot exe uh, urls dot py if you open this file you should see a lot of information already present in it hmm. so it already has one url that is admin okay which uh, which is obviously for admin user uh, your will will test uh, will check this url as well but after we write our own url so now uh, we'll just so see it is uh, they have already mentioned so much information function views okay how will you write okay they have already given us okay how to connect it so uh, we have created function there are also class based views which are also quite uh, it depends okay both are equally strong uh, uh, nothing like okay uh, one is better uh, another is okay better than one it is just uh, as per your requirement you uh, create your views so function is uh, quite simpler easier and also strong so yeah how to now connect your view to the url that will uh, the client will hit that url so okay uh, we have this already uh, okay we'll see already present uh, url pattern in this url patterns we already have a path admin okay and uh, it will be calling some views which has been imported okay uh, from the admin app so we are similarly going to create one so in this we'll create our own path that is url pattern uh yeah we'll call it books slash okay trailing slash is a good practice because then every time when you create a new url you don't have to start with a leading slash that is the only thing that is why we have this trailing uh, slash written then this is your urls pattern and over here we can see uh, we need to connect which view we want okay to be called for when the client hits this url so we have created a view called books which is in a views file views dot books this is what we have created we can give it a name this is optional uh, but it is a good practice to give a name because uh, 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 sometimes we can okay call this url using this name later purpose okay this is this will be used in uh, slightly okay later part of the code but for now uh, our main focus is tying up the url with the view that you have created 
so we are saying uh, the url pattern should look like books and it should call the view that we have written view start that is books so this is a view mean books which is present in views file so views dot books okay now one more important thing this file will not know what is this views from where is this this view from where it has come so we need to import it so from a app a app is library manager correct we need to import the views okay this line is important okay so from our app that is library manager we are importing the views and this views but books will now call your view all right so this is how we okay tie up the url with the views and similarly you can create uh, as many you want and good practice to give a comma after you complete because the next time you may have more url patterns okay this line you need to import the views this line you will be tying up your url pattern okay with the required views so kindly type this sir yes yes i am not understanding why we are doing in this url dot py file only sir see uh, the thing is uh, you will have a uh, request one second uh, see you will have requests coming from the client side correct yeah correct yes, sir. yeah so suppose there is a website uh, like uh, facebook okay so you will have something like uh, uh, facebook slash uh, login correct yeah yes sir yeah where you will see login page you will see facebook slash register where you will have sign up page registration okay then you may have after you log in you may have facebook slash uh, friends will give list of all the friends all right so these are all url patterns that okay a website will have website will have multiple url patterns right yes sir yeah so for okay particular request what business logic should be executed for login i need the login uh, logic where i'll check uh, whether the user is authenticated for registration i'll create a user for friends i'll i know already who is the friend and i'll look up in database for the friends so three all these three things have a different business logic right yes sir yes sir yeah so now i should tell okay my django that for login okay call okay the logic which is present in views i may have written login or login user whatever name name is just okay for okay our understanding that this is the login user then uh, so it can be anything then for register okay call this view views dot okay you can say registration form or okay so and so all right and for friends uh, you can say i sure your url should call views dot uh, you can say all friends you may have written or something like that okay i am not typing okay so i am typing friends all right so uh, the django should understand or any application for that matter any web framework you are using not necessarily django but it should have some connectivity between the request and okay the logic that will be executed for that request right yeah yes sir yeah yeah so someone will hit a uh, facebook login should go to login should not go to some other thing and should not wait where should i go it should be readily there so we we'll, we can create multiples if we have login page we'll have another path login slash which will call views dot login okay and there it will have its own logic yeah Yes, I understood, sir. Thank you. Yeah, sir. yeah, thanks. Sir. Yeah. So this is the place where you will be wiring up your views uh, with the 
URL pattern. And once you are done with this, kindly save the file. Okay. Uh, I hope uh, all are like done typing the code. Yeah, done. Okay, fine. We'll be moving ahead. We have saved this file. Now the time to uh, run our server. But before uh, we run our server, yesterday we are uh, we have uh, added our app in the settings dot file. Let us check that once. So uh, yeah, so uh, I think so. We not added that part was no. not done. So okay, okay. Add and wait. Okay. okay, okay. So fine. Uh, so guys, uh, now we'll be uh, again. We are in the same. Uh, what do you say? Uh, folder that is library management. This is where we have URLs. We also have settings.py. Now settings.py holds all the information about your website, everything. Okay. So let us let us open that. And if you open it, again, you can open it in any edit. Uh, spider will be good. Uh, yeah, so if you see it is okay, uh, settings for your project, uh, everything is a uh, lot of information is there. It, I would suggest, uh, okay, it will take time for okay, uh, to, uh, to understand this properly. So, uh, as you develop something, it is you'll slowly, slowly, okay, understand many more things related to this. So, because if you look at the file, it's quite huge. Then, too, we'll try to okay, see some important basic things that we need for example right now okay uh, these are the installed apps in your project so they are admin or uh, content type sessions and all those things okay so basically as i told you web framework handles the sessions and this part is written already in django okay in this okay uh, package sessions admin uh, we'll be seeing admin uh, how, uh, how well uh, Django provides us with uh, the admin interface. Authentication uh, is basically login, log out, okay, to authenticate user. So these are already present in your project, okay. So Django, okay, provides already with all these things. There are also middleware, okay, for security purpose also, okay, we have various middlewares. Okay, uh, so quite quite uh, okay useful things already okay done for us, and we don't have to worry about it. We just need to focus on our app. So we'll be adding our app over here. That is, uh, sorry, library manager, because uh, a project uh, should know means the settings file should know that okay library manager is the app which belongs to this project. So all the wiring up needs to be done quite important. So nothing magical happening, everything you tell, okay, to the Django and accordingly it will behave. So you need to mention that, okay, there is one more app now that is library manager. You can create multiple apps in a single project and you can start, okay, adding it over here. So library manager is the app that you created yesterday. Kindly add this over here. Otherwise, uh, when you run your server, it won't recognize library manager. Once you are done, uh, save this. All right. Yeah. So once you save this, uh, let us move back uh, to the terminal. OK, so right now, uh, where am I? I am in. Okay, the settings.py. Okay, and I'll move one directory back outside my project container. So right now I'm in uh, library management folder. Okay, and if I uh, see what is the content, it is okay. I have library uh, management, library manager, which is my app. Now I will have manage.py file. Okay, which will help me execute a lot of. Uh, Okay, Django admin commands. So Python dot manage dot py. I'll run server. 
So I am sure yesterday uh, you all did this. <clears throat> you ran the server. So this is the so obviously test server that we'll have to test our application. So yeah, we'll run this python manage.py run server. And it will say that, OK, using settings, which is present in library management for this development server. Okay, which will be at your local host colon 8000. Hmm. So all, okay, uh, have started your server. Okay, so see, uh, what we did right now is we had a view, which is actually uh, will do all the processing, uh, the logical work, and uh, it uh, it will. OK, call the necessary HTML. The HTML also we have created. OK, it's over here. So which will be rendered uh, as per the context passed. And uh, the response, OK, will return the response to the client who is requesting for the so and like, uh, whatever necessary resources. So this is how uh, the flow is, OK? Now, few things before I hand over to Ankit uh, for further uh, things uh, like creating database, okay, all those things. Uh, we'll come to a file that is settings.py. Uh, this is one of the most, most, obviously, it is the important, the most important, I would say, because it contains all the things. So whatever magic that we see automatically, oh, you write in URLs, it automatically takes the URL. Then uh, you create templates, it automatically takes the template. It comes to know because everything is specified here. Okay, there is no magic as such. It is clearly mentioned. So to understand settings itself, you need a lot of time. Uh, okay, uh, you need to invest a lot of time in development and understanding the settings. But I'll give you a short, quite quick overview of what is related to us, what we have done right now. If we see, yeah, we understood installed app and all these things. You can see there is one more thing, root URL config. So here we have mentioned that kindly use library management.urls. So everyone has urls.py file, correct, in their library management. Yes, I'm right. Everyone has this file. So we are telling settings. We are in the sense by default, it, uh, this is there. Okay, we can give any other uh, uh, path also, and it will work fine. So we are the one who control uh, will be controlling this. Okay, where my URLs will lie. So over here, it's uh, that is why uh, we simply wrote URLs in library management. It is working fine. We don't have to do anything else because it's already there in settings. And templates also, okay, uh, slightly okay. Many uh, uh, attributes are there, but uh, okay, app uh, dirs true means this means that it will check in your directory that uh, whether there is a template uh, folder and it will uh, automatically okay find the fetch your html you can make this false and you can okay pass your directory over here some means you have created your html somewhere else okay maybe on your desktop not here so you can pass that uh, okay path as well means or some inside your maybe inside your app you don't want templates and all you want something else you can do that it is not like okay uh, you can't but, but then you have to okay tweak uh, slightly with uh, this uh, html uh, i mean to say sorry the settings.py file okay so it's all there all right so many settings are there uh, quite uh, okay uh, a lot of things to understand in this as well so only to make clear that there is nothing magical. It's everything properly connected, mentioned, and in control. All right. Now, with this information, uh, one more thing that we'll be looking at is, OK, uh, now we'll be creating a user now. OK, basically, admin user, super user. So right now, I am in which directory? I am in the project library management DIR, OK, uh, directory. So here, I have managed dot py file so manage.py file okay we can use it 
to run server, to do many more things. We can also use it to create. There is a command create super user. OK, so we can use it to OK, uh, basically create a super user. Uh, before you guys do it, uh, you all do it. Uh, I'll just uh, first do it. It should give me an error. You all can also try. It will show an error. OK, so uh, I just pressed enter and it is giving me an error. OK, you all can also try should give almost uh, the same error. Uh, if no errors, then it is good. Wait for me to correct my error. So python manage.py space create super user. OK, is the command. There is no space or anything. So I'll again write it over here. Python manage.py create super user. This is the command. OK, that you will give now. So I hope most uh, have this error. Uh, no table such as uh, uh, auth user, or underscore user. There is no table. Uh, I am getting, uh, uh -huh. you mean migrate question mark. Mm, uh, OK, OK. All right, so migration. Your, uh, your spelling is incorrect. Please check your migrate spelling. It is suggesting a better spelling. No, it is uh, uh, giving the spelling. System is giving. What was your command? My command is python manage.py py create super user. OK. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll uh, see that one second. Uh, before that, uh, anyone uh, uh, who got uh, the error? No error, got error. No, no error is fine. Uh, this is username leave blank to use or something like that. Yeah. User uh, yes, then please wait. Yeah. And, please execute uh, the command. If there is no error, then wait. If there is an error, then let us know. If there's yeah, no so error, then please wait for the next instruction. Yeah. Can you give an example by writing a directory? Uh, Smith is asking, but uh, it will uh, consume time for now because there are a few more things. Later, this can be tried. That's quite trivial, simple thing. So, yeah, thanks. Yeah. But no error, no error, find. Uh, okay. So, means uh, no error is good. Uh, means you guys have already created the table. Um, so, fine. So, in my case, it is throwing me an error because, uh, okay, when I run uh, python manage.py, uh, run server. If I do this, it's starting. Okay. It shows me a message over here. You have 18 unapplied migration. Your project may not work properly until you migrate them. You do the migration and the apps are admin, auth, sessions, content types. These are all installed apps that you had seen in settings.py. In settings.py, you have already seen this. And OK, what does this mean is migration is in Django, you will be having this file called models.py, which is your next uh, session about creating uh, tables. So uh, in Django, we write, uh, OK, the database uh, OK, that we want to create, we write it in a Pythonic way. We create a class like OK, a book, and it will automatically, uh, once I do migration, uh, I migrate it. It will automatically create a table in the DB. OK, so that is how it works. So right now, this is OK provided uh, admin, auth, user, user. These are provided by our framework, Django framework, which is already present. So what we are going to do is we are going to do python manage.py migrate. So we are going to create a table. OK, so any uh, this only those who have uh, uh, error will do that, okay? Because those who don't have any uh, error will definitely don't have to do because they've already created it. And uh, so, if I do this Python, sorry, not Python, Python, ns dot py migrate, okay? And I'm pressing enter, and it will give me information applying applying yeah, okay? These are all table information uh, that is created in my uh, database. Okay, so anyone who got error, kindly run this command: python space manage.py space migrate. And uh, 
I think uh, uh, Anand sir uh, had some error. May go because if uh, after doing the migration. Maybe. Migration sir. Gone right? Yeah, My it error. has gone. Okay, okay. I'm getting all okays. Yeah, okay. Means sir, migration. Not, is... The list is not as long as you. It's short. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fine, fine. That is maybe version site version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is fine. Yeah. Not an issue. Okay. So everyone done with migrate. Correct. Uh, let us see uh, what is the status and chat. Yeah. Uh, uh, create username. I'll talk about it. Please wait. Avinash. Uh, okay. What we did for not getting an error. So we got an error was that the table auth user is not found. If you uh, see the error. Uh, that we got okay it was okay no such table auth user so auth user is a table in the auth app provided by django itself the django web framework so it has uh, it is already there for us we don't have to create user table okay that is quite helpful right and uh, now this table we just need to create a database once we have a database and all uh, our things will work properly now this was missing. What migrate does is what we ran over here command that is python manage.py migrate. It will create uh, the table in your database. Okay. And all this information is stored in the folder called migrations. Okay. It is a folder which will be present in each app migrations. The time when we create uh, uh, a model. Okay, that is what is about uh, uh, the next uh, session is about. Once you create a model, you your uh, library manager, uh, you will get a folder called migration, which will contain all the information that okay, uh, it will instruct okay uh, to the database to create the tables, to add columns, to alter the field, and all those things. Okay, which which will be there. So migrate uh, will simply apply those migration, those information, and it will make your database ready. With the required tables and okay fields, all right. I hope uh, that answered uh, that made uh, the things clear. Okay, fine. Yeah. Now, if you have run uh, yesterday, you don't need to run it again. It is uh, it will also you have already applied no migrations to apply, so not to worry at all. Uh, yeah. So if I do migrate again, I think it should give me. Okay, no migration to apply. So you will get this message if you have already run the migration. Uh, 